Hello from the American Lost today and welcome back to our channel in the past few days. We have received sad news of the passing of extraordinary talents today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory in addition. We will be recapping the stars that we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support if this video or the legacy of these remarkable individuals has touched your life. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance, thank you. Christina Sandera, Clint Eastwood's companion, dies at 61. Christina was a lovely, caring woman, and I will miss her very much, he said in a statement released Thursday night. They were very quiet about their relationship. The pair reportedly met when she was working as a hostess at Eastwood's Mission Ranch Hotel and Restaurant in Carmel by the Sea, California, and started dating in 2014. Beyond her connection to Eastwood, Sandera is known for her impressive career in the hospitality sector. Before her association with the film industry, she built a successful career as a hostess and manager at some of Hollywood's top restaurants. Her ability to provide exceptional customer service and manage high-profile dining establishments earned her a solid reputation in the hospitality industry. This experience not only showcased her managerial skills but also allowed her to develop a network of influential contacts. In the realm of filmmaking, Sandera has made notable contributions behind the scenes. While she does not typically occupy the limelight, her work in supporting Eastwood's film projects has been crucial. Sandera's organizational skills and keen understanding of production logistics have made her an invaluable asset on set. Her ability to ensure that everything runs smoothly behind the scenes has played a significant role in the successful execution of various film projects. Shelley Duvall was an American actress, who passed away at the age of 75 on July 11, 2024, from complications of diabetes at his home in Blanco. Shelley Duvall is a distinctive and highly talented actress whose career highlights demonstrate her unique contributions to the film and television industry. Duvall's career began in an unexpected way when she was discovered by director Robert Altman at a party. This chance encounter led to her film debut in Altman's 1970 film Brewster McCloud, where she played the role of Suzanne. Her quirky and engaging performance set the tone for the rest of her career, showcasing her ability to bring depth and individuality to her characters. Duvall continued to collaborate with Altman, appearing in several of his films throughout the 1970s. One of her most notable roles was as Mildred Millie Lamoureux in the 1977 film Three Women. Her portrayal of Millie, a lonely and eccentric woman, earned her critical acclaim and won the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival. This role solidified Duvall's reputation as a versatile and daring actress willing to take on complex and unconventional characters. In 1980, Duvall took on the role of Wendy Torrance in Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Stephen King's novel The Shining. Acting alongside Jack Nicholson, Duvall delivered a haunting performance as the increasingly desperate and terrified wife of Nicholson's character. The intense filming process which involved long and grueling shoots pushed Duvall to her limits, resulting in a performance that remains iconic in the horror genre. Despite mixed initial reactions, Duvall's work in The Shining has been re-evaluated over the years and is now celebrated for its raw emotional power and authenticity. Duvall's career also included significant contributions to children's television. In the early 1980s she created, produced, and hosted the Emmy award-winning series Fairy Tale Theater, which adapted classic fairy tales into live-action episodes featuring an impressive roster of guest stars. The show was praised for its creativity, high production values, and ability to appeal to both children and adults. Duvall's dedication to the series demonstrated her commitment to bringing quality entertainment to young audiences. Another noteworthy project was Shelley Duvall's Bedtime Stories, an anthology series where Duvall narrated various children's books. This endeavor further showcased her passion for storytelling and her desire to foster a love of reading and imagination in children. Her warm and engaging narration style made the series a beloved addition to many households. In addition to her work in film and television, Duvall also made notable appearances in music videos and other media. She appeared in Paul Simon's music video for You Can Call Me Al, 
bringing her distinctive charm to the world of music. This willingness to explore different mediums highlighted Duvall's versatility and willingness to experiment with her craft. Bob Newhart was an American comedian and actor. He was known for his deadpan and stammering delivery style, who passed away at the age of 94 on July 18, 2024. Newhart died from complications of several short illnesses at his home in Los Angeles. Bob Newhart, one of the most beloved comedians and actors of the 20th century, has had a career filled with remarkable highlights that showcase his unique comedic style and enduring appeal. His journey in the entertainment industry is a testament to his versatility, wit, and ability to connect with audiences across multiple generations. Bob Newhart's career took off in the early 1960s when he released his debut comedy album, The Button-Down Mind of Bob Newhart. This groundbreaking album, featuring his signature deadpan delivery and clever monologues, became a massive success. It reached number one on the Billboard charts, an unprecedented achievement for a comedy album, and won Newhart the Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 1961. This success not only launched his career but also set a new standard for comedy albums, influencing countless comedians who followed. Building on the success of his album, Newhart made a seamless transition to television. In 1961, he hosted The Bob Newhart Show, a variety show that showcased his comedic talents and brought his humor to a wider audience. Although the show was short-lived, it cemented Newhart's reputation as a leading figure in comedy and opened doors for future television opportunities. One of the most significant highlights of Newhart's career came in 1972 with the debut of The Bob Newhart Show. In this classic sitcom, Newhart played Dr. Robert Hartley, a Chicago psychologist dealing with eccentric patients and a quirky group of friends and colleagues. The show's clever writing, combined with Newhart's impeccable timing and understated humor, made it a critical and commercial success. It ran for six seasons and remains one of the most cherished sitcoms of all time. Newhart's portrayal of Dr. Hartley earned him several Emmy nominations and solidified his status as a television icon. After the conclusion of The Bob Newhart Show, Newhart continued to leave his mark on the television landscape with another hit series, Newhart. Premiering in 1982, the show featured Newhart as Dick Loudon, an author who runs a small inn in Vermont. The show was known for its unique blend of humor and the memorable characters who inhabited the town. Newhart enjoyed an eight-season run and concluded with one of the most famous and clever finales in television history. The final episode, which revealed that the entire series was a dream of Dr. Hartley from the Bob Newhart show, became a cultural touchstone and further showcased Newhart's innovative comedic style. In addition to his success on television, Newhart also made significant contributions to film. He appeared in several movies, including Catch-22, 1970, where he played Major 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 Major, and Elf, 2003, in which he delivered a memorable performance as Papa Elf. His roles in these films demonstrated his ability to bring his unique comedic sensibility to the big screen and endeared him to new generations of fans. Newhart's versatility as an entertainer extended beyond comedy albums, television, and film. He made numerous guest appearances on popular television shows, including The Big Bang Theory, where he played Professor Proton, a role that earned him his first Primetime Emmy Award. These appearances showcased Newhart's enduring appeal and his ability to connect with contemporary audiences. Shannon Doherty was an American actress and director, who died from breast cancer at her home in Malibu, California on July 13, 2024. Shannon Doherty's career began at a young age when she appeared in various television shows and commercials. Her first significant role came in 1982 when she was cast as Jenny Wilder in the popular TV series Little House on the Prairie. Working alongside veteran actors like Michael Landon, Doherty showcased her acting skills and demonstrated a maturity beyond her years. Her performance in the series marked the beginning of her long and diverse career in the entertainment industry. Doherty's breakthrough role came in 1990 when she was cast as Brenda Walsh in the iconic teen drama Beverly Hills, 90210. The show, created by Darren Starr and produced by Aaron Spelling, became a cultural phenomenon, and Doherty's portrayal of Brenda quickly made her a household name. 
Brenda Walsh was a complex character, and Doherty's performance brought depth and relatability to the role, earning her a massive fanbase. Despite off-screen controversies and rumored conflicts with cast members, Doherty's impact on the show and its success was undeniable. Her tenure on Beverly Hills 90,210 lasted until 1994, and her departure marked a significant turning point in the series. Following her exit from Beverly Hills 90,210, Doherty continued to build her career with various film and television roles. One of her notable film appearances was in the 1995 cult classic Mallrats, directed by Kevin Smith. In the film, Doherty played Renee Mosier, bringing her trademark wit and charisma to the character. Mallrats has since become a beloved film among fans of the 1990s indie film scene, further cementing Doherty's status as a versatile actress capable of tackling different genres. In 1998, Doherty experienced another major career highlight when she was cast as Prue Hallowell in the supernatural drama series Charmed. The show, which centered around three sisters who discover they are powerful witches, became a hit and attracted a dedicated fanbase. Doherty's portrayal of the strong and protective Prue resonated with viewers, and she quickly became one of the show's central figures. Her time on Charmed lasted until 2001, and her departure was a significant moment for the series. Despite her relatively short stint, Doherty's impact on the show was profound, and she remains a beloved figure among Charmed fans. In addition to her work in television and film, Doherty has also participated in various reality TV shows, including Dancing with the Stars and Shannon Says. These appearances allowed fans to see a different side of her personality and further endeared her to audiences. Her candid and unfiltered approach to reality TV showcased her authenticity and relatability, qualities that have endeared her to fans throughout her career. Richard Simmons was an American fitness instructor and television personality, who died at his home in Los Angeles on July 13, 2024, at the age of 76. He had suffered a fall at his home the day prior and refused to seek medical attention. Police said that his death appeared to be from natural causes. He was buried at Pierce Brothers Westwood Village Memorial Park in Mortuary. Richard Simmons, a charismatic fitness guru and motivational figure, has had a vibrant and influential career that spans several decades. His contributions to the fitness industry and his unique approach to promoting health and wellness have made him a beloved icon. Simmons' career is marked by his infectious energy, colorful personality, and unwavering dedication to helping others lead healthier lives. Richard Simmons' journey to fame began in the 1970s when he opened his fitness studio, Slimmons, in Beverly Hills. Unlike many fitness centers of the time, Slimmons was welcoming to people of all shapes, sizes, and fitness levels. Simmons' philosophy was rooted in compassion and inclusivity, encouraging everyone to embrace exercise as a joyful and empowering activity. His classes were known for their high energy, upbeat music, and Simmons' enthusiastic encouragement creating an environment where participants felt supported and motivated. Slimmons quickly gained popularity and became a community hub for people seeking to improve their health and well-being. In 1980, Simmons released his first exercise video, The Anatomy Asylum, which later became known as Sweatin' to the Oldies. This groundbreaking video series combined classic rock and pop hits with accessible and fun workout routines. The videos were a massive success appealing to a broad audience and making fitness enjoyable for millions of people. Simmons' vibrant personality and ability to connect with viewers made Sweatin' to the Oldies a cultural phenomenon, and the series spawned several sequels and remains one of the best-selling fitness video series of all time. Simmons' influence extended beyond fitness videos. He became a ubiquitous presence on television, appearing on numerous talk shows, game shows, and even his daytime talk show, The Richard Simmons Show. Airing from 1980 to 1984, the show combined exercise routines with interviews, cooking segments, and motivational stories. It earned Simmons an Emmy Award and further solidified his status as a beloved television personality. His appearances on shows like The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson and Late Night with David Letterman showcased his humor, charisma, and ability to entertain, making him a household name.
James B. Sicking was an American actor who died of complications from dementia at his home in Los Angeles, on July 13, 2024, at age 90. James B. Sicking, a versatile and highly respected actor, has enjoyed a distinguished career spanning several decades. His work in television and film has left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry, showcasing his remarkable range and dedication to his craft. From his iconic roles in groundbreaking television series to his compelling performances in feature films, Sicking's career highlights reflect his talent, professionalism, and enduring influence. James B. Sicking's career began in the 1960s with a series of guest appearances on popular television shows. His early work included roles in series such as The Fugitive, The Outer Limits, and Bonanza. These early performances demonstrated his versatility and ability to adapt to a variety of genres, laying the foundation for his future success. Sicking's dedication to honing his craft and his ability to bring depth and nuance to his characters quickly earned him recognition within the industry. One of Sicking's most notable roles came in the early 1980s when he was cast as Lt. Howard Hunter on the critically acclaimed police drama Hill Street Blues. Created by Stephen Bochco and Michael Kozol, Hill Street Blues was a groundbreaking series that redefined the police procedural genre with its ensemble cast, complex characters, and multi-layered storytelling. As Lt. Hunter, Sicking portrayed a disciplined, by-the-book officer with a penchant for militaristic strategies. His performance added a unique dimension to the show, blending humor with intensity and contributing to its critical and commercial success. Hill Street Blues received numerous awards and accolades during its run, and Sicking's portrayal of Hunter remains one of the most memorable aspects of the series. Following his success on Hill Street Blues, Sicking continued to build his career with a series of prominent roles in both television and film. In the mid-1980s, he joined the cast of another iconic series, Doogie Howser, MD created by Stephen Bochco and David E. Kelly. The show starred Neil Patrick Harris as a teenage medical prodigy. Sicking played Dr. David Hauser, Doogie's supportive and understanding father. His portrayal of Dr. Hauser added emotional depth to the series and showcased his ability to bring warmth and relatability to his characters. The show was a critical and commercial success, further solidifying Sicking's status as a versatile and talented actor. Sicking's film career also flourished during this period. He appeared in several notable films, including The Star Chamber, 1983, a legal thriller in which he played a corrupt judge, and Outland, 1981 a science fiction thriller set in a mining colony on one of Jupiter's moons. In Outland, Sicking played Sergeant Montoni, a pivotal role that demonstrated his ability to tackle complex characters in a variety of settings. These film roles allowed Sicking to showcase his range and versatility, earning him critical acclaim and further establishing his reputation as a skilled actor. Evans Evans was an American actress who played the character Velma Davis in the 1967 film Bonnie and Clyde, who died on June 16, 2024, at the age of 91. Born in Bluefield, West Virginia, Evans appeared in more than 25 feature film and television projects, including the 1961 Twilight Zone episode A Hundred Yards Over the Rim, the 1961 Gunsmoke episode, Harp's Blood, the Alfred Hitchcock Presents episode The Big Score, and the Alfred Hitchcock Hour episode 1 saw the whole thing, as Penny Sanford, 1962. Evans appeared as Flirt Conroy in the Dark at the top of the stairs at the Music Box Theater on Broadway in 1957, working with Teresa Wright, Pat Hingle, and Sandy Dennis. Evans was cast in an uncredited role in her husband's 1966 film Grand Prix. Throughout her career, Evans Evans received recognition for her contributions to the entertainment industry. While she may not have achieved the same level of fame as some of her contemporaries, her work has been consistently praised for its quality and depth. Her performances have left a lasting impression on audiences and have earned her a loyal following of fans who appreciate her talent and versatility. Joe Bryant was an American professional basketball player and coach who passed away at the age of 69 on July 16, 2024. While no official cause of death was announced, the Philadelphia Inquirer reported that Bryant had recently suffered a major stroke.
Joe Bryant, also known as Jellybean, has had a multifaceted career that spans playing professional basketball, coaching, and contributing to the sport in various capacities. His journey in the world of basketball is marked by notable achievements, significant contributions, and a lasting impact on the game. Joe Bryant's professional basketball career began in 1975 when he was selected by the Golden State Warriors in the first round of the NBA draft. However, he was traded to the Philadelphia 76ers before the start of the season. Bryant's athleticism, scoring ability, and versatility on the court quickly made him a valuable player. He played for the 76ers for four seasons, showcasing his skills as a forward and becoming known for his flamboyant playing style and ability to entertain the crowd. After his time with the 76ers, Bryant played for the San Diego Clippers and the Houston Rockets. Throughout his NBA career, he was known for his ability to score, rebound, and play both inside and outside the paint. His playing style was characterized by his agility and finesse, earning him the nickname Jellybean. For his eight-year NBA career, Bryant averaged 8.7 points and 4.0 rebounds per game, contributing significantly to his teams and leaving a lasting impression on fans and fellow players alike. In 1983, Bryant made a bold move by taking his talents overseas to play in Europe. He joined the Italian Basketball League where he played for several teams, including AMG Sebastiani Rieti, Viola Reggio Calabria, Pistoia Basket, and Reggiana. His decision to play abroad not only extended his playing career but also allowed him to experience different styles of basketball and cultures. Bryant's success in Italy further solidified his reputation as a skilled and adaptable player. His presence in the European leagues helped raise the profile of American players abroad and demonstrated the global appeal of basketball. After retiring as a player, Joe Bryant transitioned into coaching, where he continued to make significant contributions to the sport. He began his coaching career in Italy, where he had played for several years. His coaching stints included roles with Italian teams like Reggio Emilia and Olympia Milano. Bryant's experience as a player and his deep understanding of the game enabled him to mentor and develop young talent effectively. His coaching philosophy emphasized teamwork, discipline, and a strong work ethic, principles that he had embraced throughout his playing career. In 2005, Bryant returned to the United States and joined the coaching staff of the WNBA's Los Angeles Sparks as an assistant coach. His knowledge of the game and ability to connect with players made him a valuable asset to the team. In 2006, he was promoted to head coach of the Sparks. Under his leadership, the team made significant improvements and became a competitive force in the league. Bryant's coaching style was characterized by his emphasis on fundamentals, player development, and fostering a positive team culture. Michael J. Fox, the celebrated actor renowned for his roles in iconic television shows and films, recently delighted fans with a surprise appearance at the 2024 BAFTAs. This rare public appearance garnered significant attention and excitement, marking a notable moment in his career and personal life. Fox's presence at the awards ceremony was particularly meaningful given his current health challenges and his generally limited public visibility in recent years. Michael J. Fox's career has been marked by a series of remarkable achievements that have endeared him to fans around the world. Starting his career in the late 1970s and early 1980s, Fox gained fame with his role as Alex P. Keaton on the hit television show Family Ties, 1982-1989. His portrayal of the ambitious, politically conservative teenager earned him widespread acclaim and several Emmy Awards. This role not only established him as a talented young actor but also set the stage for his future successes. Following Family Ties, Fox became a major film star with his performance in the Back to the Future trilogy, 1985-1990. As Marty McFly, Fox delivered a charismatic and unforgettable performance that became iconic in the realm of science fiction and popular culture. The success of these films cemented his status as one of Hollywood's leading actors and endeared him to a generation of moviegoers. Throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, Fox continued to build on his success with roles in films such as Teen Wolf, 1985, The Secret of My Success, 1987, and Doc Hollywood, 1991. 
His work in these films showcased his versatility and comedic timing, further establishing him as a leading figure in the entertainment industry. Despite his success, Fox's public appearances have become increasingly rare in recent years, largely due to his ongoing battle with Parkinson's disease. This neurodegenerative disorder, diagnosed in 1991, has significantly impacted his ability to work and maintain his previous level of public engagement. Parkinson's disease is characterized by tremors, stiffness, and difficulty with movement and balance, which can make public appearances challenging for those affected. Michael J. Fox's health has been a significant aspect of his life and career in recent years. After being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at a relatively young age, he was only 29, Fox made the difficult decision to go public with his condition in the late 1990s. His decision to disclose his diagnosis was driven by a desire to raise awareness about the disease and to advocate for research and support for those affected. Fox's advocacy work has been instrumental in raising both awareness and funding for Parkinson's research. In 2000, he established the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research, which has since become one of the leading organizations dedicated to finding a cure for the disease. The foundation has funded significant research and clinical trials aimed at improving treatments and ultimately finding a cure for Parkinson's. Despite his public advocacy and ongoing efforts to support research, Fox has faced considerable personal challenges due to the progression of his disease. Parkinson's disease can be unpredictable, with symptoms varying in severity and impact over time. For Fox, this has meant adapting to changes in his physical abilities and managing the emotional and psychological aspects of living with a chronic illness. Fox's appearance at the 2024 BAFTAs was a poignant reminder of his resilience and dedication to his craft and public life. His rare public appearances are met with a mixture of admiration and empathy from fans and colleagues alike. These moments serve as powerful reminders of his contributions to the entertainment industry and his ongoing fight against Parkinson's disease.